This was actually a song from Srila Bhakti Nautaku Radhika Charana Patna. In one sentence, who doesn't worship Sri Radhika, who is the guru of Uchvala Prema, will never attain the service of Sri Shyam Sundara. Jai Sri Radhika. So today, by the blessings and the mercy of our Gurudev, we will go on sharing on the subject, the verses and connection from Shishi Vilab Kusumanjali with quotes from Chaitanya. Chari Amrita. And there are a lot in Sri Shivila Kusumanjali. So last time we came to verse number six. And the last quote was a very nice one from Shikshashtakam. Although I was unwilling and blinded by ignorance, he delightedly made me drink the nectar of devotion laced with renunciation. So today we will go on with verse number seven from Shishivilap. Kusumanjali and the main topic is separation and of course vilap on separation which is coming up to I cannot live but also I cannot die because to live without you doesn't make any sense but I have so much hope so I can also not die so this is the basic mood we are t uh, talking of and here are quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita Madhya Lila and other ones also. So let us dive in this theme. One may ask now how this kind of apparent agony can be recognized as the goal of life. Since all goals of life are supposed to be blissful a very good question. Usually we want to have a good life. <laughs> How can someone have a goal to have agony in his life? Suffer, to suffer in separation. It is natural that someone who has no experience with prema, love of God, especially bracha prema, will ask such questions. Although the culmination of transcendental ecstasy, prema has two bodies. One is meeting and the other is separation. Consequently, the loving devotees always swim in the ocean of very painful love in separation 
as well as in the ocean of most blissful love in meeting. These feelings can never be compared to the ordinary feelings of joy and sorrow that are experienced in this material world. Only experienced devotees know this. So anyone who has this love in the heart knows its power. It is like a mixture of poison and nectar. Now comes the quote. This was the theme and now comes the quote. Chaitanya Charit Amitta Macha Lila 251 In this connection, Srimati Sanat, Sanatan Goswami has written in his Brihat Bhagavat Amrita 1.7.125-126 Although the heart of the loving devotee initially burns in the forest fire of apparent misery and lamentation because of his separation, still this is in fact a joy that is even greater than the transcendental bliss of meeting Krishna, an indescribably beautiful abundance of ecstasy. As soon as the mind wanders off elsewhere, it is as if Swamini runs away. So this is the connection for us now. <laughs> I took this line here to make it clear because we are not lamenting for Krishna. As soon as the mind wanders off elsewhere, it is as if Swami runs away, saying, First become mine. When you fully surrender yourself to me, must stick to me like my shadow, then you will get my response. So Sri Raghunath is crying and revealing his heartache. O oh, Swamini, I don't have anyone else but you in this world. With whom else should I stay? I cannot carry the burden of life anymore without seeing you and serving you. Without seeing you, this is a quote from Mahaprabhu, these days and nights are miserable and this time cannot be passed. So actually this separation is so wonderful, so deep and has so much taste that even Krishna wants to taste it. But when Krishna understood the weight of his Priyasi's love, he ended up in a severe condition in Goralila. lila 
And here is a description, which was one of the indirect uh, quotes of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Blood oozes from the pores of his skin and his teeth loosen it. Blood oozed from the pores of his skin and his teeth loosen it. Sometimes his body was emaciated and sometimes it bloomed or blew up. So sometimes we know as a turtle and sometimes everything actually was going very far and the connection even were not there anymore. Just the skin within the Gambira cell. He rubbed his face against the wall and became completely bruised. So this was the condition. And we see that Srila Raghunath is also in a similar condition now, but not crying for Krishna, <laughs> crying for the direct seva of Radharani. Kaha nahi shuni ye ye bhavera vikara se bhava hoi prabhura sharira prachara Hasta padera sodi chotto vitasti pramane sandichati bina hoy karma rahestane hasta pata shira sap sarira pitore pravishta hoy kurma rupa tekiye prabhure chaitanya charit amrita. So here the next statement of chaitanya charit amrita. The Lord's body was filled with ecstatic transformations that were unheard of. All the joints of his fingers and toes were disconnected. Only his skin stayed in its place. They were only held together by the skin. Sometimes, again, the Lord's hands, feet and head withdrew into his trunk and he looked just like a tortoise. This was the condition of the Supreme Lord, the full non-dual truth, when he went to realize Rata's ecstatic love for him. However, the kinkaris understand everything naturally. They can understand what Swamini needs during her pastimes with Krishna and they know what pastimes will be played. So they go ahead of the divine couple and decorate the kunja accordingly before they go there. They make a bed for only one person to lie on with one pillow because they know by experience what pastime will be performed. The Sakis know that the Kinkaris have entrance into the intimate pastimes. They engage them accordingly. Lalita Adishapaya Sevana Koribo Jaya. 
Bria Saki Sange Harshamone Narutam Dastaku Receiving the order from Lalita, I will blissfully go to do my service along with my dearest girlfriends. The mood of the maid servants is identical with Mahabhav. Sri Radharani consists of Mahabhav. She is the very Chintamani jewel that is that fulfills all of Krishna's desires. Now again the quote comes from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Krishna Vancha Puna Kore E Kaya Yara. This Mahabhav is the quint essence of the Chintamani gem of love of God. And it serves to fulfill all of Krishna's desires. The maidservants are like the Chintamani stones that fulfill the desire of both the couple. Therefore, Krishna pitifully prays to them for Radharani's indescribable mercy. Jai Shri Radha. So we can see in this verse, it is actually the seventh verse of Shri uh, Vilap Kusumanjali, which is actually the opening of the Vilap of Srila Raghunadas Goswami's Vilap. So it gives a very clear description what is actually the mood of him by making a comparison with the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and is describing actually the pain in the heart of Srila Raguna. And this actually is the whole mood of this Sri Srivilap Kusumanjali. And very interesting that always quotes from Chaitanya Chart Amata are underlining all that. But it's not just a description of the pain, the separation. It's also a description of the jewel, the Chintamani jewel which is given to the maidservants. So it shows also the other side. They have something extraordinary which was never given before. So the maidservants are themselves like Chintamani stones that fulfill the desires of both of the couple. And this comes from Radharani's indescribable mercy. So this is the ground mood of this Rishi Vilap Kusumanjali. Very interesting point. Verse number seven is also explained by Shri Ananda Das Babaji. Uh, very um, long, long explanation. So it's a very in, uh, important verse. And no wonder that they are so many statements of Chaitanya Charit Amrita also inside. So the next one, if 
you want to share on this, please go on. Share something with us if you have some experience or some extension. Just do it. You can interrupt any time. The next quote of Chaitanya Amrita is about how wonderful is Sri Raguna Das. How wonderful is Sri Raguna Dasa's pure absorption in Radha's service. He says, Vila Pami Kapi Dasi. I am known as your maidservant. He's not shy. He's saying, I am known as your Dasi. I may be unqualified, but he who has offered me to your lotus feet for your maid service is your qualified maid servant. So now comes the next answer of a question which is not written here. But one could ask, well, if this is such a wonderful state and uh, how to get it? I also want to have it. So how to get it? How can I have it also? I want that. Because alone from the description, my heart is melting already. So please, someone may answer me that question. How can I get this? Chintamani jewel. And here's the answer. When merciful Sri Guru Dev offers me to your lotus feet, you have to accept me. When merciful Sri Guru Dev offers me to your lotus feet, you have to accept me. That's a statement. You have to. Why? I mean, even Krishna is lying at her lotus feet. She is the topmost guru. She is Mahabhav personified. How can Everyone say you have to do something. This is based on the knowledge that love binds. Pure love binds more. And the purest love binds the most. So Radharani is the purest love in person. How? She cannot accept the person which is given by her maidservant. She has full faith to her maidservant. Full faith. So whatever her maidservant is offering to her, she has to accept because of Sambandha. Deepest form of Sambandha, bound by love, Banda, Sambandha, together bound by love. So that's why she has to, because of her love and her mercy, and 
Of course, Srila Raghunadas is completely aware of the nature of Swamini. So he knows you have to. And this is a statement. Guru Krishna Rupa Hon Shastrera Pramane Guru Rupa Krishna Kripa Korin Bhaktagane Chaitanya Charit Amrita The scriptures prove that the Guru is a form of Krishna. Krishna bestows his grace on the devotees in the form of the Guru. This is another way, a gift of your lover. Can you refuse that? Srimad Das Goswami Pat's example of Radha Nishta is to be followed by the surrendered Rasika Bhagavatas. So if this is even with Krishna like that, how much more it counts also for Radharani? Because she is the highest form of Mahabhav in person. So here's a point I wanted to add because it, I think it's a very interesting point. Here we were talking about Radhanishta, the best example of Radhanishta. So Srila Anandadas Babaji wants to underline this again by another sentence. And he's just giving this one, don't place your faith in the material body, for when it dies, it is punishable by Yamarat. Prima Bhakti Chantrika. So this underlines again where to put the faith. We invested so many times in this material world our faith in the false things, in the wrong things, which are actually not eternal, not stable, not of our nature, of the nature of body. So we invested wrong. But now it's very clear here where we should invest our hope, our faith, and everything we have. Put everything on one color. On the golden color. Whatever you have, whatever you are, put everything on one color. Invest everything on one color. The golden color. <laughs> so these were the quotes of verse number seven of Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. If you want to share on that some questions or some extension or whatever, please feel free to do so. Yes, there's a question from here, from my side. Just a moment. <laughs> Love you, Love. Mm, I was thinking about the situation of Mahaprabhu in this Gambira cell. 
Um, yes, I know it's eternal, but it's more at the end of this Chaitanya Charitamrita. And here we are, more in the beginning of this Vilap Kusumanjali. Can we say that it's for Raghunath Das Goswami the base somehow, or this, uh, this feeling of this lamentation and this... So you, you, you say that where Mahaprabhu ends, Sri Raghunath begins <laughs> with, with the Vilap Kusumanjali. Is yeah, this the this, question? Yeah, the thought was there, yeah. What do you think about this, actually? Gurudev, maybe? Available? Or someone else wants to share on that? Radhe Suniti Didi. I think it makes sense to to feel like this. One can feel like that. Actually, the feelings are unlimited. How I get inspired from inside. So what you feel right now when I try to we constructed, yes, because in his whole life, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he experienced many baths, right? He was also sometimes in his Vishnu bath. <laughs> when Jagai and Madai come, and Jagai was hitting Nityananda, he called his chakra. <laughs> so he could, you know, he's... And then, in the end, he only wanted to be all the time in Radha Bath. That's also why he uh, he was in that Gambira small room. It's a stony room. It's a stone that he has been lying on. And once you see the stone, it's amazing. It's a soft, you know, his body was on that soft stone. And uh, so he was always in these ecstasies that create all his uh, transformations of his body, of his divine body. His body is divine, but still he was in this material world. So these transformations, they were also bhavas, feelings, showing he was out of this world. He was not of this world. Mm. So the vilap, for Raghunath Das Goswami, it was his last swan-like song. And it's compared to the swans because they, I haven't heard it, but they can make a beautiful song of love, especially before they leave their bodies. So it, it, it makes sense, right? Because Raghunath Goswami was in separation feelings and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was feeling, was, you know, tasting the separation feelings of the bhavas of Srimati Radhika. Different, all different kinds of feelings. He was diving deep. And so Raghunath Goswami is also diving so deep, unbelievably deep undescribably deep in his love to Srimati Radhika. So it's a nice meditation to connect it. And for us also, we know that Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Gurudev always says, is a PhD. It's the university uh, studies for those who want to be professors in love, in bhakti. So that is a must. It's a foundation, not only of Raga Nuga, but especially Rupa Nuga, of that highest relationship that we can have to Swamini as a Dasi. So Raguna Dasko Swami was also like his Gambira cell was Raguna, was the, the steps of, of uh, Radha Kund. 
was not even in the cell. He was not hiding. He was there. He was, uh, everyone could hear his cries. Mm -hmm. And they say that even nowadays, these cries of Vilap, these bouquets of golden like tears, pearl like tears to Swamini, to her service, to her, you know, maidservant, would they can be heard. So I like it and I feel into it. Many beautiful flowers come into the heart. Thank you very Thank much. You. Actually, it was verse 7 um, is mostly connected with Chaitanya Charitamrita because of that, actually, because of that point, because it's the base when the feeling Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had in the mood of Radha was that she was crying for her beloved. But then in the end, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going even a step higher. He wanted to have the experience of Manjari bath, And for him, this is the highest. That's why it comes in, in the end, actually. And he's celebrating this in the end and is leaving it for us because it's his gift. This is the gift he brought and he nicely packed it in different bars. But in the middle is actually the Manjari bar, which was his most precious gem he brought, actually. Because it's un not Ujjvala Rasa. Ujjvala Rasa was there before, but not this kind. That's why it's un not. It was never before. Like we heard just a few statements ago that it was never heard of. No one heard of this before. It is actually proof that it was not heard before of that. So it's unnat Ujjvala Rasa. And of course, it's, it's actually based on that feeling. Because if we don't miss, depends on our relationship. But if we don't miss, in our case, Swamini, then everything will be fine here. Mm. And we will stay here. We have to have this highest feeling of separation to actually call out for her in the deepest feelings. Otherwise, it will not come to success. Like a baby is just lying in a corner and will the mother come? She's just cooking or doing something. She will not come, she will just go on. But if the baby is crying out, she will let fall everything and immediately go there. Immediately. So that's the kind of cry we need, actually. We need to have this in our heart. And that's why Vilap Kusumanjali is actually showing us the way how to get this feeling inside. How to come to that stage like Srila Raguna Das Goswami, lamenting all the time, immediately when he comes back to his bodily consciousness, immediately, not one second, he is thinking, oh, okay, it's a very nice day, it's nice. No immediately under any circumstance he cries out for personal service and actually this is our goal here Tavai was me here in this material world I am yours and you are mine and that's why I want to serve you because 
I understood because tattva means to somehow understand the way of love, somehow step by step, very slowly understand what could be love, actually why I would need love, how love would actually be, uh, how it would look like or something like this. But actually beyond that, where knowledge ends, the feelings start and that means practical experience. So we need tattva to come to that stage that we want, we want to feel it and then we have to feel it and the feelings, they will grow. And this is the practical way. And this is Raga Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti. It begins with feelings, then Prema Bhakti. So actually this is, of course, the, the base of all endeavors on our way home to Radharani's lotus feet. And there's a wonderful uh, statement also. It's a little bit describing the nature of separation also. In verse number eight, Swamini is not so easy to get. So it's not so easy to get her lotus feet. So when the devotee is so anxiously and exclusively, anxiously and exclusively, it's not that if mother will not come, I will call the father. It's not that if Radharani will not come, well, then I will go to Krishna, you know. So, no, exclusively. Srila Raghunath in his last verses of Vilap. Yes, Krishna is coming, but he is just praying, please bring me to your Swamini, uh, to, to, yes, also his Swamini, but to my Swamini, so that I can serve her and you through her. I want to serve her. So when the devotee is so anxiously and exclusively waiting, everything else becomes insignificant for him. And he will slowly be drawn, he will be drawn to Radharani's lotus feet and now comes the point, through his experiences, Bhava Bhakti, experiences means you experience it on the base of feelings of Bhava, spiritual feelings. And this is the experience which actually is drawing you there. So it's a process which is going on by the mercy of Radharani. The light that emanates from Sri Radha's two nails will illuminate the heart. The light that emanates from Sri Radha's two nails will illuminate the heart. It's a golden, wonderful, shining, merciful light. And this is the life source of the devotee. It's illuminating the heart. Otherwise it's dark. And about Krishna in this sentence, it is said, Krishna will come to anyone, to anyone, to anyone, 
who meditates on Sri Radhika's lotus feet and who hears and chants about her without even being called. So Krishna is running towards someone who is meditating on Radharani's names and qualities. He is running there without even being called. Krishna, I don't want you. I didn't call you. I was meditating on Radharani. And he will help you. He is thinking about what gift could I give this wonderful soul who is meditating about my beloved. Shri Rathe, Shri Rathe, Yani Ye Dikke Yara Mukke Shuni, Se Dikke Dhaya Mora Mana. Wherever I hear the word Shri Rathe, Shri Rathe, from anyone's mouth, in that direction my mind runs. So with what kind of souls we have to do here? My loving obeisances to all of you. With what kind of souls do we have contact here? All of you calling out Radha's name, meditating on Radharani. So Krishna is already with you. Don't think that he can stay far away. No. He tries to help you every day to get this goal. The only thing is, do we accept? So these are wonderful statements here. And there's another one, Adilila 4, verse number 84 says, Devi Kohe Chyottamana Parama Sundari. The sentence is, why actually Sri Raghunadas is calling out for a cowherd girl and giving her a name like Goddess? Devi. Devi means most effulgent. Or most beautiful. So why he is calling out in this verse? So Chaitanya Charita Amrita says Devi Kohe Chyottamana Parama Sundari Devi means most effulgent or most beautiful but this beauty is made of the pinnacle the pinnacle of divine love otherwise it cannot make Rasika Shekha the king of relishes happy. So that's the proof. And by whom is she worshipable? Worshipable? Kimba Krishna Puja Krita Vasati Nagari. 
She is even the abode of Krishna's pastimes of worship. Even Krishna wants to worship her. Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. He wants to get her precious, most soft and gentle lotus feet. Even he wants to get this lotus feet. So even Krishna is worshipping Radha. I think this is underlining that Raghunath is on the best way. So this was another statement of Vilap Kusumanjali number 8 from Srila Anandadas to underline Here it is again underlined, and the connection first here during Cupid's festival, Swamini strikes her hero with her play lotus. <laughs> Tulasi giggles when she sees this, and that laughter maddens Sham Sundara. This is one of the Kinkari's matchless services. One. Again, during Cupid's festival, we know what it means. They are together. Swamini strikes her hero with her play lotus. She is striking the hero, the most well-known hero. He killed so many demons, he's just the topmost hero. Everyone knows him. But Swamini is striking him with her play lotus. And when Tulasi sees that, she giggles, <laughs> covering herself and she cannot hold back her emotions. She's giggling. Here we have this great hero. And what picture is here now? Is he really the most top? the top hero <laughs> or maybe heroine is even greater. Swamini, our heroine. And what a wonderful service to Krishna. Krishna is so happy. He is so happy with that kind of service. Shyam is enchanted by the beauty of Sri Chi's feet. Jagata Mohana Krishna Tahara Mohini. Krishna enchants the world, but Radhika enchants even him.
So she says, O oh, beautiful one, I understand. You cannot do it. You cannot put this foot leg on my feet. So Tulasi has to come doing the seva. And this makes Shyam think to himself, Alas, how unqualified I am. So this is the topmost bliss for him. He can think about himself, how unqualified I am. I cannot even put leg on the feet of my beloved. Just see how nicely Tulasi is doing that. So Tulasi moves him. <laughs> Go, Shyam <laughs> You cannot do it. I have to do it quickly. So such wonderful examples. And this shows why why it is possible for such devotees to take this pain of separation. Because in their hearts and consequently also in their minds, they always meditate on such seva. And by doing so, step by step, they will come to that point where they can do this seva directly. And that's why Sri Raghunada Goswami is lamenting here all the time. Give me direct seva. He has so many, so many scenes Actually, they come to him. It's smarana. It's what is called in English uh, visions, dreams. They're all coming in one line. Actually, he doesn't have to to endeavor for it. They're just coming line, step by step. One revelation after the other is coming. Actually. But he is lamenting for real, real seva. So that's why he is our role model. How to get in this feeling? How to get in this feeling of separation? How to understand what the really, the real feeling behind is there? It's not a suffering like we have it in the material realm. Not at all. We cannot compare that. It's the highest taste we can get here in the material world. By meditating on that and go into our real existence, our Siddha Deha, the body where we can feel it. We cannot feel it in the material body. It's not possible. So what a role model. Srila Raguna Das Goswami is showing us this perfectly. And Srila Ananda Das Babaji is wonderfully describing and explaining it. And is giving again and again the quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita to show that this is what Mahaprabhu left to us. It's not a concoction of somebody. This is actually what Mahaprabhu left for us. This is the gem. Take it. 
This is the real gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for us. Just see how wonderful it is. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not show it to us directly. Sri Rupa Goswami gave it to Srila Raghunath and Srila Raghunath is actually the role model who shows it in practice how to do it. So if you want to open that present, take the role model of Srila Raghunada Goswami and follow. This is written in Mahaprabhu's description here. If you want to open that, follow Rupa Raghunath. So mercifully, Mahaprabhu is giving us everything, the present and the description, how to get it, how to open it. So these were the quotes from verse number 8 of Vilap Kusumanjali. So Gurudev, maybe you want to give us more enlightenment and the missing points or some help. You are doing so nicely that I am in the waves of that life. Thank you, my dear. Go on. <laughs> Thank you that you use me as a mirror. So now we are going in verse number nine, where Srila Raguna does is praying, O oh Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. So here again, it is underlined, verse number seven is underlined actually again. Please revive me with the mis medicinal lack that anoints your lotus feet. And here again a statement by Srila Anandadas Babaji from Chaitanya Chaut Amita is given. The sentence, when Sri Radhika became jealous and left Krishna behind, Krishna looked for her everywhere. His mind pierced by Cupid's darts. When he could not find her, Madhava entered a kunj on the bank of the Yamuna and began to lament there. So we can see separation is going up even to Madhava. Our Mohan is going in the kunj lamenting, missing her. Shatta koti gopite nahe kama nirvapana Chaitanya Charit Amrita Even a billion, a billion gopis cannot soothe Krishna's pain of separation 
Even a billion gopis cannot soothe Krishna's pain of separation from Sri Radha. Nothing helps. He is completely under the control of our Swamini. He is sitting there completely submissive, lamenting, where is my Radha? There are billions of gopis waiting for him in the Maharas. He's not even thinking about. He does not even care. He is lamenting for Radha. Shatta koti kopite nahe kama nirvapana. Even a billion scopies cannot soothe Krishna's pain of separation from Sri Radha. So no wonder that Raghunath's pain can also not be soothed by anything. I mean, even Krishna cannot do anything about his pain because he's separated from Radha. What to speak of us? Ha Radha, you are the abode for the pigeon of my life, a boundless river with a stream of sweetness that is enhanced by Brema and a mine of jokes, riddles, qualities and arts. In the same way, the kinkeries have no other shelter but Srimati's lotus feet. I don't have anyone else but you in this world unless one thinks like that one cannot proceed towards the lotus feet of the beloved deity. So in this way, Krishna is a guru for us. He wants the lotus feet of Radharani. He writes himself down. Tehi Pada Palavam Udaram. He himself writes down. The poet could not finish his work. He himself came to write it down. Yes, it's a fact. Yes, it's true. Yes, I want to have this lotus feet on my head. Let me serve them. These lotus feet are my treasure.
So the next statement, the next quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita is in verse number 11. Eleven, the verse is also Muki. When can take keep it in your veranda. Sleeper can take monkey. You have a good sleeper. Monkey can take keep it in the sleepers in your veranda. And now not go out there. Why? He is ready to jump in this kick. So Srila Raghunadas has the wish to call his highest limb, Uttamanga, his head. With the glistening fragrant pollen of Swamini's lotus feet. Only when it wears this fragrant pollen, my head is justly called my highest limb. So what he is saying, without this pollen, it's not worth to be called like that. If Swamini's pollen are not on my head, if the lotus feet of Swamini didn't touch my head, then I cannot call my head the highest limb. Yeah, oh. Money high. Beautiful. Wonderful. How intensely he desires this. Again, we hear intensely, not just a little bit. So, in this connection, Raghunath understands that the desire, something which is hard to attain, this is his desire, it cannot be reached so easy. But he cannot give up hoping. And here again it underlines, I cannot live without you. But I can also not die, because I have the hope to get it. Exclusive desire, you said two words. Exclusive desire for you. Huh? Anxiously, yes. Anxiously and inclusive, exclusively. See that? Wow. Beautiful. Desires are there, but not exclusively. That's the point. Uh, anxious also not because exclusive desire is not there. List of desires are there. Yes, this is such an important point Gurudev just made. You because must be come out. You put it out. This comes through you, Baba. No, no, it was you through my mouth, but you made the point in the beginning. Sorry that I... <laughs> So, if we are not exclusively, then not all energy is going in one direction. The energy of the mind is going in different directions. But if we are exclusively, it's like a laser pointer, a laser. All energy is going in one line to one goal, and this is like a laser. It will actually burn everything on the way. But only if it's 
exclusively then it's a laser yeah and then it gets intense then heat is coming the light is very intense and it burns away all other things mm -hmm. So, Gurudev, we pray to you that you give us this exclusive desire. This is so rich word you share that only I am meditating from that time. And when you say exclusive, it's beautiful to listen back and anxiously when you say it. I'm telling you, it gives very, very special feeling. In the temple we put the two quotes there, no? Exclusively is also is there. And I don't know the quote. Somebody knows it, I don't know. It is. That's it. It is on page thirty-four. When the devotee is so anxiously and exclusively you see. Waiting, in the connection of waiting, I find this is a very important point. It's not said endeavoring. Yeah, waiting. Wow. It's not said endeavoring. It's said when the devotee is so anxiously and exclusively waiting. See, Everything else becomes insignificant for him. Oh, that is no meaning. What is happening? Is all material. Yes. I'm waiting for your lotus feet. Nothing else. And this is shown. It's shown in the end. In the end verses, we had 199. We were reading some. I think two Sundays ago or something. And there we can see that actually Srila Raghunadas is acting like, no, this is not Radha. No, this is not Radha. No, this is not Radha. He's just waiting for the lotus feet of Radharani. And whoever comes, he's very respectful. And he's asking, can you give me the lotus feet of Radharani? Can you give me maybe? And even Krishna. First he's asking Radhakund, because Radhakund is not different from Radharani. But he sticks like a laser on his point exclusively. I just want to have the seva of my beloved's lotus feet. In this way, everything to him becomes insignificant. Even his body, he's blind. He's practically almost dead because of thirst and hunger. He didn't eat, he didn't drink. He is blind already. Still, he sticks exclusively. And still he is waiting. There's also Trinata piece on each in our I am humbled because all my endeavors failed. <laughs> but like the grass, somebody step on the grass, the grass comes back. 
in its shape. Meaning, I'm so humble, but I cannot give up hope. I'm sitting here waiting. I cannot give up to hope. And I'm tolerant like the truth. I tolerate everything. But I cannot give up hoping. But I'm naked. Everything I tried has failed. I cannot, I cannot get it by my own endeavor. I have to receive it by mercy. So only I can get it if somebody give me. Waiting, continue waiting. But I cannot give up hope. And then the light that emanates from Sri Radha's two nails. The light which emanates from Sri Radha's two nails will illuminate the heart of any devotee who develops such an indescribable devotion. And now another point we discussed already so many times. Krishna will come to anyone who meditates on Sri Radha's lotus feet and who hears and chants about her even without being called. So I cannot say I'm free from any wishes. No, Krishna, I want something from you. I have one desire you could fulfill. Bring me to the lotus feet of your beloved. I only want that from you, nothing else. So only when my head wears the fragrant pollen, my head is justly called my highest limb. How intensely he desires this. Although Raghunath understands that he desires something which is hard to attain, he cannot give up hoping. And now another statement from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Appana ayogya deki mone pahokshobha tata pito mare ghune upajaya lobha Although I see that I am unworthy, my mind is still greedy for your attributes. And actually this is again in the connection what Krishna, uh, what Gorachandra just said. We may say, yeah, but okay, we are humble, we are waiting, but maybe we are not qualified. Maybe we cannot get it. Oh. 
because we are unworthy. How a dwarf can hope to get the moon from the sky? How it's possible? So our only hope is the mercy of Swamini, because she is the most merciful person. And like we heard, Krishna wants to help, and there was written whoever. Whoever. There was not written very qualified persons or devotees, only this or that kind of persons. No, it was not written. There was just written everyone. Anyone who. Anyone who. chants the name of Radharani. Anyone who meditates on her, her attributes, her form, and so on, her qualities, her sweetness, her elegance, her lavanya, whatever, anyone, anyone who is doing this, his mind is running to him. So we can be full of hope. It's not because we are qualified. No, it's because of the qualification that Krishna is a very, very, very eager servant of Radharani's lotus feet. And that's why he sees in every other person who is chanting this name of Radha a most qualified person like himself and he wants to help that person and this is our good luck so it's not because of our qualification it's not that we could have hope because we are something special but because of the mercy of krishna and especially karuna mai karuna mai the person who gives shelter even to Krishna because of her qualities, because of that we can have hope. And this is giving light in the desperate heart of a devotee. Although I see that I am unworthy, my mind is still greedy, still greedy for your attributes. <laughs> Although he sees that he is completely unqualified, his mind is still illuminated by the hope for getting their sweet mercy.
So the next quote in this verse number 11 is Ratri Dina Kuncha Krita Kore Radha Sange Kaishora Vayasa Sapala Koila Krita Range Day and night he plays with Radha in the groves of Brindavan. In this way, he makes his adolescence successful with his love sports. So this is our good hope because we will be needed there. The manjuri is preparing so that Radharani can meet her lover. Day and night he plays with Radha in the groves of Brindavan and he makes his adolescence successful by playing such love sports. But who he will need for that? The manjuris. And our Radha cannot meet her Mohan without her maidservant. So it's by their arrangement and by their love that we are needed and this is our good luck. And even though we are not qualified, Radharani will make us most qualified by her mercy. What a good luck. So the kinkaris and the manjaris are needed. And actually in Anandadas Babaji's comment further on down, there is another statement of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Jagat Mohan Krishna Tahara Mohini, again, we heard that again. And in this connection it is said, Sri Krishna is the inciting power of Cupid, the one who agitates even the mundane agitator Cupid with just the slightest drop from the ocean of his all enchanting power. But the kinkaris are serving she who enchants even him. Jagat Mohan Krishna Tahara Mohini. Being thus enchanted, Krishna finally assumed her mood and complexion. Sri Lochandastaku sings Radhara Deyane Hiya Kisache Sachilogo Egora Tanu Tarasaki. He meditated on Radha within his heart, and that can be proven 
by his appearance with this golden body. So again we see everything starts with the appearance of Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, we wouldn't sit here now and share on these topics. So the wealth is that we can share on these topics. And this is actually underlined here again in Ananda Das Bhavachi's quotes in verse number 12. He is taking Chaitanya Chaitanya, Chaitanya 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 Amitra 8 251 to underline a point. There is there is the question what is the most what is the best welfare actually? Srila Ramananda Roy, he is answering to Chaitanya, uh, to, to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Bhakta Sangavina Shreya Nahi Ara. There is no other welfare than associating association with Krishna's devotees. There is no other welfare than association with Krishna's devotees. So it is said Krishna's in the sense that all Raga Bhaktas are included. But we know our way. So it's very clear that the association with Radhadasis is the most precious gem we can get. From the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. From the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. What does that mean actually, that statement? Do you have some thought about this? You want to share on that point? From the, view, from the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. Hmm. So it is said here, Krishna creates the world through his Icha Shakti, desire potency. And what is his desire? He desires Radhika. Therefore, without her pleasure potency, the world cannot live. <laughs> Gurudev, we have a very wonderful question here. Yeah. Chaitanya Charit Amita Matya Lila 8 251 states yeah. from the viewpoint of Lila. Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. 
डाल के माता जी ले जाएंगे From the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. Krishna creates the world through his Icha Shakti, desire potency. And what is his desire? He desires Radhika. Therefore, without her pleasure potency, the world cannot live. Why? This was the question to you, Gurudev, please. That is the Prema Shakti. Radhika is Prema Shakti. Radhika Shakti is the love Shakti. Whole universe is moving because of the Prema Shakti. If there is not Prema Shakti, there is a conflict Shakti. Whole world is demonious behavior doing and fighting is going on and viral are coming because of the demonious Shakti. Krishna knows only by the mercy of Prema Shakti this world can exist. People can be peaceful. I create, but the creation is maintained by her. That is Prema Shakti. Shakti of love. If love is moved, only Shakti happens. That is Parvati. But the, in, in Shakti, if Prema comes, is a different energy. Prema Shakti without nothing work. When the demoniac mind happens, we, we want to deny the Prema Shakti. That is my false ego with demoniac energy. Demon is working in the form of the false ego. So he knows if the Prema Shakti is not there, Radhika is not there, whole world will collapse. When we want to suffer in our life, our material life, we remove our Prema Shakti from us and then demonic Shakti start moving. You see Russia and America and every place. Where you see the war and fighting is there because Prema Shakti is not there. We discussed the subject, I don't know in which lecture recently, but in the Leela, the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes under the control of love. And so, also the part and the passage of the God, they also come under the control of the love. So when she appeared in Kali Yuga as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then the kingdom of love is bigger than kingdom of God. If in Kali Yuga the rules of God are counting, then there is no hope for us. But because God is under the control of the love, 
because of this is auspicious for the whole creation for us jeevas we can get it because god is under the control of love one beautiful realization from by this god of chandra what is happening is all his krishna leela but what is happening and when we see when she appears in my heart we see that everything is a leela where the prema shakti is there is a different circumstances where prema shakti is not there is a different circumstance there is a war where the prema shakti is not there and where the prema shakti radhika is there is always past time going on jiva abhishek abhishek means we always moving and every every activity is, is the krishna leela where 24/7 they are in the what is the word in amorous past time these are the amorous past time of them that is happening nitya vihar to see that she has to appear in our heart that we can see exclusively and i want to listen from your voice exclusively and anxiously and that's the point then she appear without that exclusively or anxiously she not appear we see very far distant like a with i say one example when maya subject come we see the maya out of my material body <coughs> everything is maya but my material body is very is spiritual we never see from my senses body false ego maya start out of soul is the maya so my wrong calculation right so similarly without anxiously looking to her is not appear she not appeared inside us and exclusively and when we she appear then everything is a ambrose past wonderful here ananda das baba ji is writing without krishna's desire this desire is personified by radhika krishna's desire is personified by radhika so without this there is no material world which underlines your point without radha there is no existence even of the material world if there is no prema lakshmi or prema shakti is no material is all hell 
When we want to live in the hellish planet, we want to live far from Prima Lakshmi or Prima Radha. That is my unfortunate time when come it happens. You also explained, Guru Dev, that her love actually is the reason for creation because she wants to expand. So I mean, this, her love is the reason of living. Yeah. And the Krishna has a desire for creation. But without the love, we cannot live. Every moment we are dying like anything. We are the big rascal. We want to die every moment. It's better to die one time. Without love, you are dying every moment. Without Prima Lakshmi, without Radha Sakti, how you will survive? This is in the creation coming, but not material. It should be divine. Love is always divine, not for sense enjoyment. But the nature has to be loving. Pancham Pursati has to be in the life. If Pancham Pursati is not there, six and seven effort is very far. We will come to the gunas back. So then, uh, I was just uh, meditating on this. Uh, come here, out here. I'm here. I'm here. Light. Picture will not come. Picture is not coming. Okay. Feelings. Feelings are there. Face is not there. Move this. Move this. Okay. Now feelings are going. Have to be fast. Move from this way. Sorry, I'm disturbing Guru Dev. I'm very sorry, Guru Dev. Now I'm bringing him out of the floor. <laughs> so my intention was not to bring him out now, but more in. So I'll try. I was just reading uh, some days ago that um, Radharani Skunja Abhisarini, she's on a love journey to meet Mohan in the Kunja. And the Jiva who wants to attain the mood of a Dasi, of Radharani, can take this Abhisar as an example of his own love journey to Swamini's lotus feet. And that's called the Jiva Abhisar, the love journey of the Jiva. This is what Gurudev was saying so beautifully, that without love, our journey is only hellish. <laughs> but if that love, this aspiration to accept the mood of a dasi comes, then everything becomes a loving step in our journey life. Is very difficult. Very difficult. Our journey is not easy. Yeah. Muddy road. Muddy road. Muddy road. Snakes. 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 Uh, thorns. And thorns. And everything is there. Is difficult, but we don't bother. We, we, we fall in the muddy road three, four times, clothes are dirty, everything dirty. She said, go and change. We say, we don't want to change you. I don't want to go back. I want to follow you. <laughs> Difficulty is no problem for me. Because you are you are there. Prema Lakshmi is there. Why to bother for that? And one thing happening, we run away to change our clothes because I leave Prema Lakshmi to change myself dress again. 
means I live my Prema Lakshmi. This is also happening. She said that go and change the clothes. She is testing us. How much we have loved. Manjuri said, no, no, I no need to change the clothes. I will clean it. Your service are more important. I don't want to leave you. <laughs> Many more difficulty come in the path of Prima Lakshmi. It's not very easy. No catch this path is a very suffering path. Gurudev, it says also in this verse that on this love journey of the jiva to Swami's lotus feet, he distances himself from material life. There's no more wish to have a reverential relationship with the Lord. He only prays for intimacy and every obstacle is a stepping stone to help to reach there. I yeah. yeah. The stones are not a stone with the prema If the pain comes, Krishna cares. Because you are Dasi of Prema You are Dasi of Radha. I always say one story. If you have a lover, you go to meet your lover, and your beloved has a cat and dog. You bring the biscuits with the cat for the cat and dog because when she will see, it will become she will become happy to see favorable. that you are so favorable to her cats and dogs. Her angerness will be will. <laughs> So Krishna, yes, cast and cat and dog. We are cat and dog because we are Ardasi, Radha Dasi. We want to change our clothes. We go back. <laughs> <laughs> because we want to be a sannyasi, we want to be my ego, so I want to dress up nicely, you know, ever. Very good. <laughs> she said, okay, okay, go. Go back to home. <laughs> Start from zero. Yeah, again, see that. Radhe Radhe Gurudev, thank you very much. Thank you all very much for your mercy and your inspiration. Without no, your without no, your wish, I can do nothing. No, bring your mind back to home. Means never leave her. her. In any condition we are, we never leave her. That is Jiva Avishad. Jiva Avishad. Gopina said that why to read any place? Jiva Avishad. Why you identifying your material and is spiritual, but is Jiva Avishad. You are in Avishar with her, why to leave her? 
He's not giving. Why we want to be? Why we want to be? So, Gurudev, I, I just realized that actually there is a circle now. We started with uh, trennung, uh, separation. We started with separation. Without Radhika, there would be no material world, so there would be no bodies. Without bodies, there is no sadhana. Without sadhana, there is no prema. Without prema, there is no jiva abhisa. So it's a circle. Circle of mercy made by Radha. Oh, and Krishna is took the shelter of Radhika by what is meaning that he protects us. That is Kalpataru. Kalpataru. You are sitting under the gulf of Vikta. Yes, we are sitting under the wish fulfilling gripper. Thank you. Jai Ho. Jai Ho.